running out of water, typhoons, being hit by lightning, capsizing, sinking, or somebody going overboard. Crossing oceans is dangerous. So how do you prepare the boat to meet these dangers head on? Sailing is a dangerous pursuit, but when you take a boat across an ocean, the dangers magnify. So it's up to you to minimise the risks and take as many precautions as you can to ensure that the boat is in good order before you set sail. Of course, before you set sail on any journey, you should be ensuring that all your systems are working properly. So you have to check everything. And for this particular passage that we are doing, we're going to be doing some extra modifications as well. So some of you have been asking, why aren't we leaving straight away to start on our next journey? And that is because we have quite a bit to do to the boat. So we hope that this video will give you an overview of the kind of things that we have to take into account. Since we live on the boat full time, we're always doing maintenance and we have a pretty good idea of the areas that need attention, but we still have to check absolutely everything, make repairs or replace where necessary. Now we're going to go into more detail on each of these in turn in future videos and we'll be asking for your feedback and uh, ideas as well. But just to give you a general overview, the big long list begins with safety equipment life raft, flotation devices with leg straps, double check your jack lines, survival suits, flares, grab bags including food, water, emergency water desalinator, comms, fishing equipment, torch and of course your EPIRBs. You're going to need some kind of uh, medical kit, not just a straightforward first aid kit but that's a nice starting point, plenty of bandages, sutures, that kind of thing, painkillers, I'm going to try and get uh, morphine, which will require doctor's certificate. You're going to need antibiotics, again, doctor's certificates, that kind of thing. Some people do even carry defibrillators. Oh, and dental kits. Rigging. Now, we are going to be re-rigging Esper ourselves. It's coming up to 10 years old now, so we feel it's the right time to do that. Uh, but of course, it's not just your standing rigging. Look at your running rigging and also your spars. Sails. Again, we have fairly new sails, so we're pretty good there, but we are thinking of getting another light wind sail. We need to check our older light wind sails for wear and tear and probably upgrading uh, our sail repair kit as well. It's important to look at your steering. Check the cables. Are they attached properly at each end? Have they come loose? Is there any corrosion? And maybe the cables have stretched, in which case it's time to replace them. And then you also need to check every winch. Every winch on the boat needs to be completely dismantled, cleaned, and then put back together again. Yeah, and don't forget to look out for cracks and corrosion in your deck fittings as well. Through hull fittings, check the condition of them, and also have a bung, a dedicated bung, attached to each one. And it's probably a good idea to have a plan, a drawn plan of where all your through hull fittings are so that everyone is familiar with where they're located on the boat. Once you've done that, you need to check all your electrical and electronic systems, check every single one of them. Usually there's a cable problem and that's usually what you have to replace, but do make sure that they all work. Plumbing. Another big one on the boat, check the water tanks, see if there are any leaks, are they okay, are they clean? Um, the toilet, does it work, are all the spares, did you have plenty of spares available if there are any problems with it? And then also the water maker. The engine of course will need to be inspected, make sure that everything is functioning correctly, that there is no corrosion anywhere on the engine, that all your fittings are nice and tight, replace all of your filters, your impellers, and of course to have lots of spares as well. And of course, depending on how old your engine is, you may even want to consider giving it a bit of an overhaul. So I mentioned spares already when I was talking about the engine, but it actually applies to pretty much everything on the boat. If you can afford the space, then carry spares of everything. You actually need a spare locker to put all your spares in. Carry spares, lots of them. And finally, comms. Absolutely essential to have good communications when you're doing a passage like this, you need some kind of satellite communication. We're going to go for the Iridium Go, because at the moment we believe it's the best on the market for reporting weather and keeping you in touch. That is, unless of course Elon Musk comes out with something. 
So that list isn't exhaustive by any means and we're sure there are going to be plenty of things that you're going to come up with. So please, please put them in the comments. Let us know what you think or what we've missed out. So we've looked at all of the basics that we would consider when it comes to boat prep. But of course we are going to be going into colder climates. So there's a whole load of other stuff that we have to think about in order to prepare Esper for our journey to the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, before we go into that, I just want to answer a question which no doubt we're going to be asked and that's how we're going to afford all of this. Um, yes, uh, this passage does mean that we have got to spend quite a lot of money. We've got, two, we've got a few ways of de dealing with this. Firstly, the Patreon and Rum Fund pledges that we get, which are fantastic and really, really help us, and up until now have gone into buying equipment and editing and all the other things that are involved in videoing. That, that money is now going to be diverted into the boat prep. So first of all, just want you to know that's what we're going to be doing with that money for the foreseeable future. Secondly, we of course are tightening our belts. We had planned to go to the UK next week, but we've knocked that on the head. It was just going to be too expensive and take too long. And so we can't go there. We've postponed that and we'll wait until we're in a position to be able to afford to do that. And thirdly, we are applying for a bank loan. Um, we're waiting to hear if we're going to get the bank loan. It will just make life a little easier and enable us to get things done quicker. Because at the moment, we're going to have to spread the cost over a longer time. So one of the things that we've been looking at is a heating system. We're going to need heating where we're going on ESPA. Uh, we've been looking at diesel heaters, stove heaters, which seem to be the most efficient. But the issue we have with that is it's going to require quite a bit of chopping ESPA's interior, including putting a whacking great big hole in the deck for the flue. And it may be that we're not going to be staying in the colder climates for too long or to warrant doing all of that work inside. So we've been looking at alternatives. We've been looking at Wabastos and Eberspackers and those kind of forced air heating systems as well. Um, the other alternative is to install a generator. And if we have a generator, it means we can just run fan heaters. And of course, the advantage of having a generator is that we wouldn't just use it in the colder climates. It's something that we could use in the longer term as well. So that's where we are currently with the heating system. If you've got any more ideas, please let us know. Um, one of the major things we're doing, and you may already know about this, is we're changing the setup in the cockpit. We used to have a small canvas spray hood with a bimini above us. Absolutely hopeless when it's wet. When we crossed from the Maldives to Malaysia, we got drenched from morning till night for 24 hours, and we don't want to do that again. We said we would never do that again. So we are currently building a hard version dodger with a hard roof, a hard front. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pulling faces because it is going to kill Esper's lines. Yeah. It, it, whatever we design is not going to be great, but it is essential. Yes, it's practicality over beauty. So that's being done right now. We're half, well, we've started the project right now. And of course, we have to look at adequate protection for ourselves, specifically decent oilies. At the moment, we are using old coastal oilies which are kind of falling apart because we don't really have to use them that often so we're going to have to look at really good offshore foul weather gear and that is going to have to include waterproof boots and socks because we haven't worn socks for a very long time and uh, probably a dry suit as well because if we have to go into the water to do any repairs underwater in those cold waters we are going to need dry suits. OK, that's pretty much our list. If you can think of anything else, then do let us know. Put it in the comments below. I'm sure it's not exhaustive. And also don't forget that whilst this is a general overview, we are going to be taking each of these sections in turn and looking at them in more depth as and when we acquire each of these items. Yes, so safety is going to be a big one. And I have promised David on Patreon that we will do a piece on safety, but we want to do it well. We want to do it thoroughly mm -hmm. and we will do it. Yeah. So we are opening this up for your ideas and suggestions. As you know, we love reading your comments. And in this particular area, we would love to learn something from you as well. So if you have anything constructive to say or any other questions, then please do pop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share this video. And in the meantime, peace and fair winds. Because this wind come from. Right. Hopefully it just die down.